Hello everybody and welcome back to another Cry of Fear video. I haven't done many Cry of Fear videos, but this video is going to be me ranking all of the Cry of Fear chapters since I played the entire game today. Chapter 1 is probably one of the, like, least action-packed chapters since it's more of an introduction to the game. It's a really good chapter though, I like learning all the mechanics of Cry of Fear each time I replay through it. And I like the puzzle at the start, it really makes you use your brain. This part of chapter 1 is where you fight the first enemy, he's called the slower. Not really much, but you fight a few more slowers on the way down here, so nothing really special. After you kill the third slower, you're gonna flip a lever, which is shown right here, and it opens the door and you can proceed to the apartment's level. After you get done climbing all of the ladders and stuff, you can go into the apartments, and this is where you meet the children enemy. They wield knives, so... Kind of like the slower, but deals slightly more damage, but has less health. Upon leaving this room, you were met by the baby enemy, which has a spear in its head and it impales the player. You can dodge this, like how I dodged it right there, but I recommend just running or killing it with a gun. Speaking of Chapter 1, Chapter 1 is where you get your first gun. It is one of the most reliable guns in the game, actually, and you're probably going to have it on you for most of the game if not the entire game. So after all that, you pick up a rope, climb down, you do a puzzle where you gotta get a VHS tape after going into the basement, and then you fight the first boss. This boss is really easy if you know how to press D twice or S twice, cause you just dodge and stab the whole fight. Make sure you hit the eye on his back or you won't do any damage. I like chapter one a lot cause it's a really easy and fun chapter, and it introduces a lot of cool stuff, so let's continue. Chapter 2, one of the more short chapters in the game. You meet a lot of new enemies too, and you get some new weapons in this chapter. This chapter is really good. This is the first chapter in Cry of Fear that introduces the baton and coded doors. Basically, you need to go around the map looking for like magazines or stuff that will help you find the answer. Down here is the first coded door in the entire game. Right when you make it to over here, you're gonna wanna look behind you and read the magazine, call the number, and the guy gives you the code, and then you can progress. This is also the first chapter that introduces the Saw Runner. This is more of like a fake Saw Runner part, so I'll talk more about him later. So this chapter isn't really that long, but it is the chapter that first introduces the sumo as shown here. The sumo likes to jump out from the water, and if you hit him a certain amount of times, his chance will break. That'll indicate that he is low health, like one shot or two shots. So after that, you just fight a bunch of sumos, and then you make your way to the next part. I forgot to mention these guys in chapter 1, they are just a different variant of the slower you see in chapter 1, the first enemy. This is the second coded door in the game. Now, the first coded door's code is always 5247, but this door's code is always 279, and then the last digit is completely random. This is the part of the game where you get the shotgun, and there's also a secret if you use the lighter on the cigarettes. It plays a little smoking animation. You also gotta use the lighter to light the rope. So you gotta use the lighter on the gasoline right there on the floor, then you go into that room and you pick up the key, and then you use the key on this room. After you go into this room, you will be led into the boss room. Mace is the easiest boss fight in this entire game in my opinion. You just spin valves, make him swing at you, and you run back to the dead guy. Honestly, I'm not gonna lower the rating because of that, but I wish the boss fight was a little more intense. So after going into that room, I just went to you go and grab the saw, kill the fasters, and you cut open the key and get it from Mace, and then you 
go back out to where the save is, and then you go to the next room. This area gives you a heal and helps you prepare for the next room, which I will talk about when we cut to that place. This area was never really scary when I played through the game, but it really was an adrenaline rush since you gotta be really careful. This is the first chapter where the human flower gets introduced. If you go up to it, it's a one-shot kill, so just stay away from them. This is another variant of the slower. I cannot find the name of it. This is another variant of the slower. Many people believe this is a model used to trick the player into thinking some kind of apocalypse is going on. That's what I thought too when I first played the game. This is the first chapter where Saw Runner shows up I was talking about him earlier, and yeah, I died twice here because I'm really bad at fighting Saw Runner. You can kill him, but he has a lot of health, so it's recommended to do it on the forest segment, or with unlockables. This is another puzzle segment, you just gotta put the statues in the right spots. There's a little paper up there that shows you how to do it. It's really easy, I like this part. This is the first chapter to introduce the hunting rifle. The hunting rifle is one of my favorite weapons in the game, so I might grade up this ranking just a little bit because of that. This is the first chapter to introduce the fly gear. I hate them. They're the most annoying enemy in the entire game. Now, this probably isn't my least favorite chapter, but I dislike this chapter a lot because of Carcass. He's a really annoying boss and he has a lot of weird movesets. Like, when he's not moving around, he throws a bunch of heads at you that can go through walls sometimes. So this chapter's probably going to get a low rating just because of that, even though it has the hunting rifle in it. This is the longest chapter in the entire game, so a lot of the footage is going to be sped up, unless I think it's like interesting or important for you guys to hear. So this is another variant of the slower, it's called the slower now I'm pretty sure. It's a three headed slower, that's like a, it doesn't have any strengths or weaknesses over normal slowers. This is the first time the Suiciders show up and they are deadly in Nightmare and Hard Mode. On Nightmare Mode they can one shot you and on Hard Mode they can three or four shot you. So be really careful of these enemies. This is another Saw Runner segment. This segment's pretty easy to do. The last Saw Runner segment was easier but this one's like not even that hard. This is the first chapter to introduce the VP-70. It is a burst pistol. I don't know why people hate on it so much. It's just like the Glock, but a burst. Although the Glock is better since you can have more ammo control over it. This is the school segment of Cry of Fear, and I thought this segment was really cool because this was based off his actual like college that he used to go to. So I might give this grade an extra at the end, because I really like ideas that are used like that. This is the first chapter of the game to introduce the faceless. My assumption is that they're supposed to be like zombified people or like something in Simon's mind that resembles people or like someone that was bad to him. So a short recap, I got a little lost, but you gotta get the key outside, use it on the classroom, then grab the fuse, and then you gotta go back to the subway, so that's what I did. That's why this segment took so long. This is another enemy that I forgot to mention in chapter one. They basically make you aim your own weapon at you. So I'm not gonna like raise or lower anything because they're originally in chapter one. So here's a recap, I had to go through a dark tunnel that was scary. The doctor killed a guy when I came back. 
I needed two fuses, so I went back to the apartments, killed some creatures, took a fuse from the subway, got that fuse and put it down there. Uh, went down and killed some uh, shooter guys. I got a sledgehammer, killed the slower, and then I did a mine maze, and then I did another maze. This was an actual maze, though. And then, that was the end of that chapter. This is, I think, the shortest chapter in the entire game, so expect it to be very short. After killing the shooter dude, you get on a train, and this is where, like, one more enemy shows up. This enemy's this better, it's relatively easy to kill. So this is where you get the foot, it is needed to place at the back of the train so you can get into the next train segment of the game, which brings you to the last chapter if you're going for the good ending. Basically, the train collapsed when we were riding it, when we put the foot down, and now this is happening. After running through the forest, we make it to another Saw Runner segment. We gotta pick up this doorknob and use it on the door. All while avoiding Saw Runner. So, this is the Crazy Runner. It uses the Drowns model, but it actually runs around and tries to stab the player instead of using a baby to attack the player. They're not that strong, but they're really fast, and they can be annoying when they, like, juke you and hit you. After running around for a little bit, you gotta find scissors in these houses and combine them so you can cut the rope. You can make the crazy runner hit it, but it's risky, and it's very high chance of dying if you're on hard mode or nightmare mode. So this part of the game introduces the Hanged, which is an enemy that jumps down at Simon to do a lot of damage, but then they can't do anything after that. It makes that segment one of the more annoying segments, but it's easy once you learn all their patterns. go down into this bunker looking area, you fall through a door and you gotta avoid getting crushed by a bunch of doors, and then you fight a spooky looking version of yourself, and then you're free, and then you're about to enter the mental asylum where doctor's at. Chapter 1, 4, and 6 are the only chapters in the game to have puzzles that are not used in other chapters, so it's pretty cool. Give it a bonus point for that. Chapter 6 is the first and only chapter to introduce the Psycho. They're a really strong enemy in this chapter, so it's best to avoid and dodge them at all times. I've been skipping I've been skipping a bunch of the cutscenes to save time so you guys don't have to wait a lot, but this is the one cutscene I will play because it's really cool. Basically Simon has to go get a gun for the doctor, that's why I'm running around. So you run around the asylum and you collect these two pieces of tablets, you merge them together, and then you read the numbers, and then you type them into the phone. I know I said I'd only let the doctor cut 
scene play, but this one's really cool and short, so I'm not sure that it's okay. I somehow beat the doctor in my first attempt right here, which I'm pretty proud of. This took like 10 whole minutes of me just waiting for him to corner peep though, so I hope you enjoy the sped up footage. This is the first chapter to introduce the Desert Eagle, also known as the P-345 or the P-435. It's a really strong pistol. If you're going for the bad ending, you can actually get the Doctor's Revolver. This is the only relaxing scene in Cry of Fear. It gives you like a little bit of hope. And it, may, it seems like Simon's happy. It seems like he's just enjoying the sunset, paddling down. But that's about to change, which we'll see in the next uh, little scene that happens. So basically, this whole little segment is just like killing stuff, swimming, getting a key so we can get to the surface to get back to Simon's house. It's a really interesting part of the game, and it has a saw runner part that you're probably going to barely be able to see because this is sped up. After killing all of the locals where Simon lives, uh, we make it to his house, and you'll see what happens next. I stopped myself from doing it, from committing suicide, but it didn't only leave me alive, it also left two police officers dead. I killed them, shot them both. This was not supposed to happen. Doctors testified that I was having a psychosis, which means that my punishment won't be too hard for me to bear. I have to spend the rest of my life in a mental hospital, where nurses and doctors are taking care of me. They let me finish my book, and uh, it has helped me a lot. I wrote a happy ending, just for myself. I feel better now. I am more at peace with myself, even though I'm still stuck in this wheelchair. But, uh, I accept that now. I can never forgive myself for shooting those two officers, though. But I have so many supportive people around me now, so... I, I think I will be okay. Dr. Purnell is mentoring me and is watching my progress. I'm lucky to have him. Sophie visits me every once in a while. When the doctors let her, that is. They still think her visits are too destabilizing for me and that it hinders my progress. I keep on telling her how sorry I am for making her life miserable every time she's here. She, ju she just laughs a bit and tells me to stop being so silly. But I can see the damage I've done to her in her eyes every time she looks at me. She found a new friend. One who is there for her and treats her right. I'm happy for her. Though I'll miss the good moments we've had. Knowing that they'll never come back. I think this is a good time to close this book. It has changed my life forever. The end.